All right, everybody, this is Money Madu here with the Phoenix Lounge. Uh, this is the very first episode, and I'm very happy to say, you know, my first guest, he's a <laughs> very popular guy, um, you know, was able to do big things in, uh, as, as an athlete. And um, just to kind of go ahead and, and start things off, you know, I just want to give a quick background on what Phoenix is and what Phoenix in, in, embodies and, and the reason why we ended up doing uh, this, this show. And pretty much what it is, is to bring on people like Moses, where um, what you're doing is, you know, they're, they're able to share their stories um, because everybody goes through dark periods. Everybody goes through, you know, downtimes, setbacks, all, all of that stuff happens. But, you know, as, as what we say with the Phoenix, we, there's always an opportunity to rise again. And so with that, you're able to reborn, regenerate, and just have a new version of yourself. And so with that, you know, I wanted to bring on, you know, influencers, athletes, educators, teachers, just people that uh, have stories that they can tell and um, just allow them to share with you guys and just kind of build a community around that. So, um, Let's just to start things off, you know, like I said, first guest that we have today is uh, Moses Madu. Uh, he's a former former professional athlete. Well, he is a professional athlete. Now he's a, a, a high school football coach. And yeah. <laughs> some of the things that he has, three fun facts, he loves gaming. So we talk about Call of Duty. Uh, he, lo he grew up skating, doing roller rollerblading, and uh, <laughs> he's mixed. <laughs> Nigerian and so, uh, welcome to the show and uh tell tell a little bit more about yourself to the people. Uh I mean, shoot, I'm from Oklahoma, man. Um ended up going to OU, University of Oklahoma. I'm a hometown kid. I grew up five minutes away from the stadium my whole life. Mm -hmm. Uh so like it was still a tough decision, you know, mm -hmm. but uh I pursued football there, man. It took me great places, uh NFL, CFL. I've been blessed, you know, um, to, to be a professional athlete and even be thought of in that way. You know, I got benched halfway through my senior year. I was rotating with DeMarco Murray and got benched. And, like, it was like I was, like, third back, you know. And for me to be, be a professional, to be a pro for nine years, you know, like, that's just blessings. I, I can't really put it any other way. But, yeah, I mean, that's my background. Yeah. And, you know, what's crazy is uh... – the first time I even uh, heard about you or figured out about you it was back in 08. And, you know, I yeah. just saw my last name running across the screen. I'm like, what the, what, what's going Man, on? when you add him on Instagram, I was like, dog, we got to be cousins. Like, my dude, like, right. nah, nah. Right. You, know, you don't hear that. It's not a normal name. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, exactly. It's, it's not a normal name. For anybody, the last name of dude, it has to be some type of kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if it's way down the ladder or what, but this. It ain't like Johnson or Smith, Correct. you know. <laughs> yeah, Madu, it's like, no, nah, we we gotta be kin, and if we not, we gonna say we kin. Got the right. same damn exactly. last name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, like I said, I, I just I just see my last name going across the uh, across the screen, and just being able to you know be here. There's not that many people with our with our last name, so I was like, yeah, are you related to him? I was like, is that you on the screen? It's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> It's we do have a you know, similar build, you know. I'm six foot as well. Um, yeah, just over two hundred. So, yeah, it's cr it's crazy how that how that goes. But like, could, could you tell us the process of, I guess, any of the setbacks that you might have gone through, either mm -hmm. maybe high school, you know, or leading up to college, or yeah, college, and then maybe uh, the, the pros. Yeah, I mean, shoot, where do we start, man? Um, so, I mean, in high school, I didn't get my first offer until third game of my senior year. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have anybody looking at me, nothing like that. I mean, I really – I didn't start at running back until my senior year. I started at strong safety as a sophomore and junior and rotated in, you know, and, like, people around me were getting offers and things like that and getting looked at, you know, but that I really just made me thrive. I mean, Ryan, me and Ryan Broyles were teammates in high school. And he, you know, All-American, all everything in college, broke records and stuff, so, like, he was getting all all this. And I'm like, dang, what time I got to come, you know? That was one thing. And a big thing that does come to mind is um, that this is really what made me who I am and, and the, the player and grinder is um, my senior year, right before training camp, we're actually on a break after summer workouts. My, I, I got a DUI. Wow. Yeah, I got a DUI. I got in trouble, man. You know, out being young and dumb, college, you know, 
we, we had campus corner hitting the bars and I decided to get in the car and drive and I get a DUI and I get, you know, I get suspended for the first game of the season. This is my senior year. You know, I remember sitting in the back of that cop car. I was sick. I was, oh my, I'm done. I ain't going to the league, you know, this, this and that. Like, you know, at the time, you know, I was sick. I mean, like sick, but like that really like that training camp. Cause I knew I was going to be suspended the first game of the year. And I had guys behind me like Roy Finch and Brendan Clay, you know what I'm saying? And those were, they're ranked like top three in the nation coming in, you know, and we also, of course, me, me and DeMarco Murray. And so I knew like I had, I had I really had to, to grind, you know what I'm saying? My senior year, I missed the first game of the year and I got young hungry guys, you know, behind me. And that training camp, I balled out a great training camp. And I mean, it really set the tone for me as a player, put a lot of things in perspective because I mean, like I said, I was young and wild, you know what I'm saying? I'll go out. Like, I mean, like, typical college stuff you see in movies. That's what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? And, like, everybody has drunk the drive. And the thing is, I, I got caught doing it like a dummy, you know. But it was it was a great lesson for me because I haven't done it since. I, I don't get behind the wheel. I'm Ubering. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad it happened way back then, you know, before I had kids and, you know, family and everything. And I learned my lesson, you know. And, and it really instilled that, that like, that fire back into me, that passion. And, and I mean, like, really that man i think that's what got that hunger for me really got me to the lead so so with that um was there anything as far as um as far as football goes did it put into your grind where you just put everything into it like you said you know forget school forget this like had tunnel vision after after that incident or yeah yeah um I mean, I always had school because I knew school was important. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't one of those guys, like, I major in football. <laughs> like, nah, I need this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know I'm a good guy. I could do – there's going to be a lot of things I can do with this degree, you know, and people I know with this and that. So, it, it gave me a ton of vision in the sense that football is what I wanted because mm -hmm. I, I saw it taken away from me, especially watching that first game at home on the couch. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, dang, I'm, a, I'm, I'm playing for OU and I'm sitting on the couch watching these fools. Like, this is weird. My dog's out there battling. I'm sitting here on the couch. Yeah. Um, so I, it, that gave me, it gave me a ton of vision in that sense. But as far as everything outside of me, I didn't really block it out. I mean, I've always been pretty good at, at managing things, you know, this block for this, this block for that, things like that. Gotcha, gotcha. And so with that, uh, you know, you go, how, how did the transition from uh, college to the NFL, how did that go about? Uh, so that's another story too. So I came out 2011. That's the year Cam Newton went first overall for everybody. Um, and that was actually the NFL lockout year. Uh -huh. So it was a whole new, like kind of what happened this year, the whole new CBA and things like that. But this time when I came out, it went even further, it went to the summer where they were negotiating. Mm -hmm. So guys didn't know if we were going to have camp, if we we're going to have anything, you know, everybody was, you know, ready to hold out to get, you know, to get a good contract for the players and stuff like that. But, um, it happened that they signed and we, we went into camp and what was it, uh, July or August or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I went in, I didn't have OTAs. I didn't have none of that stuff. Rookie mini camp. We literally got thrown into the fire. Like we came in, boom, it's training camp. You know, most, most rookies, anybody going to NFL, there's a training camp period and, and a rookie mini camp period. You kind of get your feet wet, learn to play, but this, this, and that. We got literally thrown into the fire. Training camp with the vets, boom, day one day two or three we in full pads i'm back there nervous like it's game day you know what i'm saying like this is crazy you know and on top of that i'm a free agent so like you know as a free agent and, and i was they call it a, a like preferred free agent or whatever but like still i got how much was my bonus like 2500 hundred dollar bonus oh, wow. everybody else was getting like 18 racks 20 racks you know what i'm saying like <laughs> nfl 2500 they wipe their ass with that they, they don't care about 2500 so it's like i knew i had to literally like get it from the mud you know what i'm saying and and like I said, looking back at that DUI, like that instilled that, like, okay, I know what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So I, I approached it the same way. I came in, like I said, no rookie mini camp, no none of that stuff. Straight into training camp uh, as, a, as a free agent running back, third stringer coming out of college. And I made the team. Right. I mean, that it just, it's, it's hard work, dedication. I kept telling myself, like, I'm going to make this team. You know what I'm saying? I had a daughter at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, I, I you know. So I, I got to do it. I got to get it for her. I went. I remember going into camp. I had two hundred dollars in my pocket. My my roommate gave it to me. Like, here you go. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then that's how I went. And I mean, it was a great investment for him. I ended up making a team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, making a whole bunch of money. You know, and right. you know, my mom and you know my daughter and everybody. So it was 
it, it was a blessing. And I mean, just like I look back all the time. I think when I get older, I'll be able to appreciate the more that I made that team as an unsigned, you know, undrafted rookie free agent. So it, it, I mean, it's real cool. And which which team was that for the audience? Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay. Yep. So so with that, with with you being in the league, and you know, I know you've been on a on a few teams. Like, have has it ever been a, a way where I, I'm sure you had the team that, that was your favorite growing up? Yeah. Did did that change whenever you got into the league, or is this? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I loved Atlanta growing up. Atlanta South, you know, doing a dirty bird and stuff. Right. <laughs> uh, they running back Jamal Anderson. He was cold. I loved Carolina too. Mm-hmm. Growing up, um, and I, I still like Carolina, but they got rid of Cam Newton. I don't right, know mess right, with right. more, man. Right. Um, but it it kind of did. But one thing it didn't change was my love for. I remember um, preseason. I I sat on the sidelines and watched Reggie Bush warm up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is Reggie Bush, the GOAT, the greatest college running back of all time. I don't care what y'all say. Barry Sanders, no, Reggie Bush. Like, I watched him warm up, man. I remember watching Ocho Cinco warm up. He was with the Dolphins, too. Was it right. the Dolphins? Yeah, it was with the Dolphins, yeah. And, like, it, I mean, and uh, we practiced against the Patriots for about four days. That was crazy. Tom Brady out there, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez was returning punts. That's how good he was. He's returning punts for them. It's a tight end returning punts, playing tight end. They also put him at running back and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it. Yeah, Tom Brady is a whole nother. I mean, you could tell why he's such a winner, man. The way he commands that team, and mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was crazy, man. And yeah, like the teams, but like the players is one thing. Like, mm-hmm. as a rookie, you're gonna be star, so you're like, oh man, it's so and so. Like, right. I'll right. never forget watching Reggie Bush, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like Reggie Bush, she probably the reason why I like the USC in, in general. I'm telling you that me too. <laughs> Everybody, Reggie Bush, man. Like you can't tell me no different. Reggie Bush, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, that 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 year, that year was that year was crazy. But um with that, uh how how has your routine in a sense changed since uh the coronavirus? By the way, I hope you know you and your family have been safe through it all. Man, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you too. Uh it's Man, I'm homeschooling my kids, my two girls. It's, it's mayhem. They fight every 10 seconds over something dumb, you know, and I'm over here being professor and a dude. My <laughs> wife's working from home, too. So it's it's been crazy. I, I mean, I haven't seen a gym since it all started. Um, I just got back into working out again. We just moved to a new house, so I've been getting the house together, this, this, and that. You know, it's been crazy. So between moving into a new house, homeschooling, it's been crazy, man, and just not being able to see my boys, you know what I'm saying, go out and hang out with them or them come over and kick it. So it's like, like everybody's been different. I mean, in Oklahoma, though, we could still go places. Mm-hmm. You know, some other places, it's completely on lockdown. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thankful for that because I'll be going stir crazy. You know, <laughs> I went to Target the other day, had my mask on, you know, everything. I took the mask off after a little bit. I couldn't do it no more. So right. Right. It's just... I mean, just trying to stay safe, sanitizing all the time, you know, if I'm going somewhere and things like that. But it's crazy. I haven't sanitized this much in my life ever. Probably like, you know what I'm saying? I never use a hand sanitizer. I'm like, man, you know, I do it here and there. But, like, now it's it's crazy. So, yeah, it's changing that fact. I'm sanitizing more. <laughs> I'm at the crib more. I'm homeschooling the girls. And yeah, it's crazy. So, so – you know, you you were a professional athlete. I'm sure you had uh, many injuries. How were you able to, in a sense, get over those injuries? Like, was there was there anything mentally that you was able to do? Any kind mm-hmm. of thing that you were able to change, or just like uh, um, the fitness? Yeah, I think for me, um, I'm pretty mentally strong. Mm-hmm. I, I take I bring take that back to being at OU, man. The way we used to do things there, like. They made us that way. The things we did there and went through, like, you weren't about to be soft manly if you, if you, if you ain't going to make it through there, you know. If you wanted to make it through there, you had to be tough manly. But um, I just put trust in the process. I'm stubborn when it comes to, like, I should be able to do this right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you heard something. Like, I told my labor, I'd be like, I should be able to do this right now. But, you know, you can't. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I would, sometimes I'll try to push myself too much. But for me, it was trusting in the process and, and in my therapist and things like that. Okay. So, so – uh, how long have you had a ther- therapist or been seeing a therapist? Um, that was back when I was hurt. That was in oh. 2000, what was that, 15? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then, but I mean, I do like when I'm, when I'm home, back in Oklahoma, I'll go to OU. I, I mean, I, those are guys who I always go to. 
our therapist, their gym there to head therapist. I mean, guys, I just trust and love and know, you know, they got my best interest in heart. So if anything, I, you know, little nicks, things getting to me, I'm right back at OU, man. Gotcha, gotcha. So how was the, uh, how was the transition from going from, the, uh, you know, the CFL to becoming a, ho- a high school coach? Like, so are you a head coach? <laughs> <or a local? laughs> yeah, so that, like, I knew I wanted to coach because mm-hmm. I just, I love working with, with young men. Um, and I've always felt the calling to it, you know, and even when I played, I always felt myself mentoring a lot. You know, they, the younger guys would always come to me and you know, I would always be there for them. A couple of guys called me dad on the team this year. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was. So like, <clears throat> I always knew I wanted to coach. And I, I've, I've been approached a few times about coaching in the past, but I'm like, I'm still playing, you know, but so I knew that's what I wanted to do. And also I wanted to coach and teach. So I could, you know, be in the classroom around my players and around my guys and, and that process was smooth, man. I had, I was blessed enough to have a, a handful of schools to choose from that wanted me, you know, all the way from 6A all the way down to, you know, to the lower schools. And so it was a tough decision. I waited a few months. I felt like I was picking the college again, man. <laughs> you know? But um, I ended up going with my daughter's school. They go to OCA. It's a private school here in Oklahoma City. It's K through 12, so, you know, so. I get to be around my daughters popping on their class, like, what y'all doing? You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be coaching uh, varsity football. So, I mean, like, I retired early because I'm a family man to the T, to my core, man. I love my wife and my girls, and, you know, I'm a hands-on dad. I take them to practices. I pick them up, you know what I'm saying? I'm cooking dinner. I'm waking up in the morning, getting them dressed, you know, pick them up from school. So, like, for me to be able to be coach at their school and be around them, too, you know, all these years I've missed, you know, being away playing football, I, I get to, in a sense, make up for it. And so that was hard to turn down, man. So, yeah, I'll be at that school coaching. I'm excited about it. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so with that, do you have any other ventures that, that the, the audience can know about? Um, man, there's a couple things I want to do. Um, I would love to get into, into real estate, you know. I know that that's, that's your avenue right there. I would love... I would love to get into that, man, you know, eventually down the road. I actually am part owner in a dispensary here in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, you know, we have medical marijuana out here. <laughs> right, <laughs> legally. Yeah, so uh, I'm part owner in that. And then it's just, I just, I would like to get my hand on whatever, man. You know, the average millionaire has, I forgot how many streams of income it is, you know, but like, I mean, to be a millionaire is cool. I don't got to be a millionaire, but I would like to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? If I want to pick up, take the kids somewhere, I let it go on vacation, whatever, you know. So that that's that's the ultimate goal, man. It's just to be able to support my family, my immediate family, and like and help out others others if I need to. Take a vacation anytime I want to. Absolutely. <laughs> buy, buy back your time in a sense. For real. Yeah, so so with that, um have you seen like I'm sure in the in the industry, you know, being the athlete, I'm sure some of your teammates they may be down or, you know, they might be going through certain things. Do you, have you have you witnessed anyone that has, you know, let a setback kind of take, you know, derail them and in a the, in the sense cost them possibly, you know, their career or, you know, something? Man, yeah, mind? I mean, going to a big school, man, you see a lot of guys who just, they let the coaching staff get to them mentally. You know, mm-hmm. they, it, it just – Oh, he ain't playing because he don't like me. This, this, and that. He got no nah, man. It's not that as you. You know what I'm saying? Like tighten up. I mean, there's guys who transferred to smaller schools, you know, and and ended up just not panning out. Guys who could have been really, really good. You know, they just weren't mentally tough. And you know, like I like like I said earlier, like to make it through, you gotta be mentally tough at OU. You. Mm-hmm. They gonna take that little crybaby stuff, you know, and, and they, oh boo hoo me. No, nah, pick yourself up. Let's get it done. Right. You know, and there are some guys they just who could have been so good, man, so good. And for whatever reason, they leave and end up going to a small school and just fizzle out. Wow. Yeah, that's – it's always shocking to me how, um, you know, there will be some athletes that just have all the talent in the world. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like either one, they can't pass a drug test or, you know – Yeah, it can't get right, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Certain, certain other things that just – stop them from, you know, setting, you know, changing the tra- trajectory of, of their family. And, and yeah, for real. That's what I'm saying. You could, you could be in the NFL making millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. and you're doing this dumb stuff. Or you're in the NFL already making millions and millions and you still continue to do, you know, A, B. 
Come yeah. on, man. One of the best receivers in the league. What's he? What are you doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Uh, what's his name? Josh Gordon. Like, mm-hmm. come on, man. So it's just, and even now, like Bones Jones and and UFC. Right. Like, right. right. <laughs> DUI had a pistol on him too. What are you doing? You got all this money. Get a driver. It's that easy. It's that easy. Or hop in the Uber. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's just something mentally or just bad influence around or yeah i think i think it's a combination of a lot of things mentally bad influence and it's just one of the things like it ain't gonna happen to me you know what i'm saying like you got in the way that's how i was i got my du you know how many times i drove lit like you know what i'm saying like it, 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 I, I was i was i consider myself a great drunk driver too you know what I'm saying? i could hop in the car and and drive a two hour two and a half hour trip and be cool but like it's just one of the things where it's not, you know, you just think it ain't going to happen to me until it does. Exactly. That's how it is. I mean, like, so like I said, a combination of things and also being like, it really ain't going to happen. Yeah, and on top of that, I've heard, <laughs> I've experienced them, I've heard those those fees make you just, after after you get after you get uh, caught doing the D D W I and your D U I and, you know, those lower fees and stuff ain't, ain't nothing to play with. Ooh, I'm telling you, man. So luckily for me, I had. Oh, oh my bad, I got a call declined. Uh, luckily for me, uh, one of my best friends was in the league at the time, and he shot me like six racks. <laughs> he was like, "Here, handle it," and I mean, it was blessing, <laughs> blessing. So I mean, I don't well, know. So it, really, so it really is a brotherhood up there with like people being. Yeah, like- no, nah, it is, man. That that's one thing, like. Coach Stoops always preached up there, like, we're a brotherhood, you know. We we, we a family, and it, and it really was a family. Like, I'm, I'm in a group chat now with a bunch of my guys I went to OU with, you know. We we talking every day, chopping it up, just laughing, doing things. You know, we, we go on trips together and things like that. So, it really is. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, we get into the end. Like, is there anything, any parting kind of advice you would like to give to people just in general for from anything that you've been through? To kind of yeah. like help them get ahead. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I, I want to put this to, to to the young man out there, um, especially in in the high school ranks. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to get to college. Like, you don't got to go to a big school to make it. Right. You know, you get your tapes out everywhere. All the small schools around you get your tapes out. Start there, and then eventually the big schools will come after you. And if they don't, don't worry about it. You don't got to go to a big school to make it. And right. um, and to really just everybody else out there, man, just keep chopping away. Right. There, there's a book I think it was called "Chop Wood, Carry Water," something like that. Okay. Uh, I, I read a little bit of it. It's a, it's a dang good book. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 just chop wood and carry water, man. Keep chopping away and, and do the things you got to do to get where you need to get. You know, if you're a faithful person like I am, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and he puts us through what we're going through for a reason. Correct. That's awesome. So so with that, um. Where where can people find you or follow you or contact you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that. Just Moses Madu. <laughs> just basic. I don't do no whatever name. Just Moses Madu. M O S S I S M A D U. All right, y'all heard the man. And uh, just for for people that are on the on the call and, and for future episodes, you know, Phoenix wants to go ahead and and do a discount code on. Um, the, the joggers that we have. So if you if you put in the code um, Olive Joggers, and you'll be able to get 25% off of our, our joggers there. So make sure y'all take advantage of that. Um, you know, once again, I appreciate you coming on the show, Moses. Hey, man, I had to do it for my, for my namesake, man. For the right. Madu, man. I got you, dog. Right. That's <laughs> I got you. Actually, actually reached out to uh, to Ryan as well. He, he's down to come on the episode as well. So. Yeah, no, Ryan. Yeah, me and Ryan done a lot of podcasts together and shows and stuff like that. But yeah, Ryan's good people. He's going to have a lot to say, especially if y'all start talking about the real estate stuff and all that. Y'all going to be talking right. for hours about that stuff, man. It's funny because he, he brought you up to me and I was like, Y'all two would get along real well with y'all, <laughs> man. Y'all love each other. So it's good. Yeah, now we go we go get you in there too. We go get you in there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. We me and Ryan been talking about it. I just gotta get my coins right. <laughs> I gotta gotta get to where I need to get you. We put a lot to his day dispensary. So <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Um if you have any last words, go ahead. But uh as far as that goes, this concludes the the episode one of the Phoenix Lounge. Uh, Once again, your host, uh, Money Madu, 
make sure y'all follow Moses Madu, um, M-O-S-S-I-S-M-A-D-U on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. All of that. I appreciate it once again. No problem, man. It was fun. All right. So what, what I'm going to do is... Um,